A Salesmanship Essay Guide 2. Chapter 1. Sales Essays 10 to 17. Sales Essay 10. You have to keep your salespeople constantly motivated. Send them to workshops, give them sales books, buy them motivational tape programs, have pep meetings, etc. No one is born a salesperson, any more than one is born a doctor or born a lawyer. Sales is a profession. To be successful in any profession one must learn not only the basic techniques but also how to apply those techniques. Success in sales makes use of all the abilities one is born with plus all those acquired through education and experience. The rewards of sales are. You can be your own boss. You can set your own hours. You can own your own businesses with little or no investment. You can pay yourself more than any boss would ever pay you. You can give yourself regular raises as your business grows. Sales Essay 11 Find one great unique idea and run with it. Most of us just think of extending our product line to new markets but a different approach is to think of some kind of gimmick or concept to make your business stand different from the rest kinda like Domino's Pizza with the 30 minute delivery or free pizza, Nike who sponsor many different teams and events or Dell who offer to custom make a computer according to your specifications. Ask yourself what do my customers really want that nobody has done yet. Find your idea and do it. It could be a product, Delhi fast food franchise, or a concept, drive through windows, photos in an hour, home delivery, etc. Find an obvious need that's not being done like a spill-proof coffee cup with a built-in hole that you can cover or healthy diet foods that taste good. How about a low-calorie bakery franchise where artificial sugar and artificial fat, alestra, are used in all the ingredients? The people who invented paper clips and post-it notes made millions out of a simple concept. Look for societal trends and find a place in there like the people who got rich selling exercise equipment and diet food when the trend took off in the 1980s. Excess is back. Why not create a totally desserts fast food franchise? Narrow your focus to one simple great idea and go with it. It's that simple. Stick with one thing. Do it well and don't try to extend your product line into everything else because then you will become just another Walmart, you can't compete with them and you will lose that thought that people have that you're a specialist in your area of expertise. If you want to be known for luxury products, don't add cheap ones to the mix. If you can't sell your product in the high class part of town, try the low class area. If you can't sell to men, try women. Packaging is everything. If it's not working, try changing the name, the product, the service, the price, and the perception in the mind of the customer that they're buying something cool and happening. Stick with your winning products, dump your losers. Sales Essay 12 Sales is a long-term commitment. You gradually learn the skills necessary to really excel. You learn by your mistakes, what works and what doesn't work. The art of sales is convincing people you have something they're willing to pay for. It could be frivolous or functional. Your job is to try to identify the particular subgroup within the general population that you think would be the most interested in your products, try to get into their heads so to speak to examine why they would buy from you. What psychological angle would work with them? Obviously, you have two very wide-spaced groups right off the bat who I'll call the Democrats versus the Republicans or the Liberals versus the Conservatives. The Liberals are the left-wing types who wanna be cool and trendy, generally most people under 35. The Conservatives are the older people interested in function as opposed to being trendy. They want more bang for their buck. Obviously, these two groups are not cut and dry. There are many older liberals and many young conservatives but you can get the general gist of how society works. For marketing purposes, it's broken down into a number of subgroups. Based on the academic demographic profiles I've seen and the different types of lists mailing list brokers sell, I'd say that most marketing experts divide American society down into about 40 groups. Find your target group or groups and target your efforts at them. In my opinion, for young people, try to appeal to them by showing how cool or trendy the product is. For older people, 
you have to sell them something that fills a need, something that they can use to enhance their lives or make them easier in some way. A lot of salespeople get a route then go around and fill out the orders of existing customers. This is not really selling because you're not pushing anything new. By the same token, selling is not intimidating, embarrassing, or pressuring someone to buy. Although this term sounds corny by now, it's supposed to be a win-win situation. Only when you genuinely feel like you're helping the guy and slash or offering a terrific price does a normal person feel like a good salesperson. A lot of people cut their teeth in sales selling low-level things like vacuum cleaners, magazine subscriptions, and encyclopedias but all great salespeople eventually find something they really believe in and stick with it. The greatest things about sales is the satisfaction of seeing people appreciate your product and the great amounts of money you can make. The worst thing is probably the constant hustle and the incredible rates of rejection. The whole world is your potential market. The hustle never ends both for good and bad products. You have to be strong to be a good salesperson because it's all about you alone trying to make sales. You don't have a team to work with or a shoulder to cry on, it's all about you, your hustle and how you don't let all the rejection affect you. If I was a salesperson which I'm not, I'd probably get a bunch of them inspirational self-help tapes and constantly play them in my car because unless you're as strong as a rock, you need something to keep you upbeat after all the rejection you experience all the time when trying to make new sales. Another thing is travel. You're always traveling around meeting new clients. You will spend many nights away from home. You have to be good at socializing and networking with people and have a kind of hustling headspace and lifestyle. Again I reiterate, you have to be a good people person, an extrovert of sorts. If you're not, think hard before getting into sales. Some people are natural introverts. They feel better working alone in a back room somewhere. There is no shame in this. You have to know where you really stand within yourself and be able to brush off all the criticism and negative crap people will throw your way. Somebody described sales as a combination of moxie and charisma mixed in with a disciplined, ambitious mindset. What about attention to detail? If you promise customer X this, this, and that, you had better write it down than deliver on your promises not like one guy I knew who promised everybody everything but never delivered. After a while, I got tired of him and he does not do my computer servicing nor sells me the equipment I need anymore because I concluded he was a big bullshitter who was wasting my time. There is nothing worse to a customer than unkept promises. Women are generally better in sales than men because they're more non-threatening and empathetic which is a fancy word for being friendly, seeing it from the other guy's point of view. If you want to know what to sell, look in a big manufacturing book like thomasregister.com to get some ideas. Don't expect to get rich overnight. It's a gradual, step-by-step -step process like everything else. The game is making sales, closing big deals. The big timers live for the art of it and tie their self-esteem to it. It's good to pat yourself on the back when you make the big sale but what happens when you don't? That's why it's better to keep cool and have a good sense of self-worth regardless of your personal sales figures. Sales SA 13 Making a lot of money is largely a process of convincing people, of selling yourself, your service, your product. The trick is to tell them what they want to hear. The problem is to find out what they want to hear so you will start out by giving them basic information about what you're selling. You then continue with your sales approach, always watching their reactions carefully. When you see their eyes light up and they then lean forward with interest then continue on the topic that aroused that interest, no matter how odd it may seem to you. Do the opposite when you reach any of the usual parts of your presentation, if the prospect shows less than the normal amount of interest, that is, shorten that part and go on to the next. Start out by telling them what the product or service is or does, the kinds of benefits people get from using it and some examples of ways, both usual and unusual, that other folks have used it. It often helps to mention that Mr. Anderson, you know, the big shot, just bought two of them for his own use, or that the XYZ Corporation recently bought seven of them for their executives. 
or if you're selling a more heavy duty item, tell them, Smith's Construction Company has been using them for years. If it's almost a custom made item tell them they're one of the select few who will even get a chance to buy it. If you have an opportunity to talk to his wife or a friend of his, play along with that other person and have them unknowingly hinting to the customer that it certainly sounds like a good deal. If his kids are with him, get them to needle him into buying it. Use any method that works. Offer him a special bonus. Say you will give him a longer time to pay or a contract for free servicing or that you will add on a bonus of another item free. Actually he may have been entitled to this extra all along but if you haven't yet mentioned it then now's the time. Try to keep one or two things in reserve as your last pieces of ammunition. Prepare in advance so you know the other man's point of view. If you're able to benefit him, he will practically jump at the chance to let you make money off him. Tell him what he wants to hear. And above all, keep eyes and ears open for any information, clues, or tip-offs, favorable or unfavorable, that will give you the power to persuade him. Sales Essay 14 Everyone sells something. Treat the customer as you want to be treated. A salesperson is a storyteller. In order to sell well, you have to have something that will help people do whatever it is that they do better. Most great products are new which means they didn't exist before which means people are doing whatever you're promoting a different way or don't know that this new product will make their lives easier. People had to be convinced that electric light was better than gas light, that they needed computers, that computerized records were much easier to use than manual record keeping. Somebody once said build a great product and the world will come to you but as many pioneers know, the world is lazy, entrenched in its ways. It has to be convinced that there is a better way to do things which often takes time. Some things catch on fast like VCRs did but some don't and some people wait until the technology gets better and they can buy second and third generation versions at cheaper prices. The iPod has not yet replaced the cassette Walkman with the over 45 crowd. The cassette Walkman is much cheaper and it's entrenched in the culture. Most people have been using them for 20 or more years. Most people over 40, even those with computers like myself, have not taken the time to learn MP3 and download a bunch of music onto an iPod. I could if I wanted but I can't be bothered. My cassette Walkman still works fine. Maybe if iPods were as cheap as a Walkman I'd buy one but until then, I can't be bothered. Now what if you were an iPod salesperson? Aside from drastically lowering the price, what would you do to try to sell them? You would have to educate the population because most of them still have no idea what an iPod is. You would have to provide a simple method to convert DVDs and cassette tapes into MP3 format. I own several hundred cassette tapes. Unless there is a simple method to convert them to MP3 format, I won't switch. Besides, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big priority with me, to convert the format of my music collection. I brought forth this example to show how I, a presumably enlightened man, can't be bothered with the latest gadgets so that you can see how the population en masse is apathetic and resistant to change. If their stove works fine, what can a new stove do better? Some people are resistant to the hassles of learning new technology so they stick with their old gadgets. You have to make new gadgets simple to use and show prospective customers how simple they are to use. In order to be successful in sales, obviously you need a great product that you believe in. Next, you have to identify the type of people that might buy your product and go to them. If it's a household product like those new robot type vacuum cleaner balls they're advertising, your market is just about everybody. If you've got a new super efficient voice recognition gadget that will quickly convert spoken language into written text, then you have to target people who will be interested in this, businesses, secretaries, teachers, writers, academics, researchers, basically anyone who works with words a lot. In my opinion, you have to approach these people directly with a strong factual pitch regardless of the medium, cold call, direct mail, email, etc., without hype. 
just state that you have a new device that could help make their work easier and you would like an opportunity to show them anytime at their convenience. Excessive selling in the classical salesman's way is bad. Being a helpful friend is better. Rather than hustling the customer to sell your product, present it such that he makes the decision to buy without being, in effect, bullied into it. This is the art to great salesmanship, to not cross the line from a good friend helping somebody into that low life, hard sell hypocrite phony we all like to hate who is the archetype of the sleazy salesman. Most salespeople reduce themselves into order takers without going out looking for more business. Your local phone book probably has all the contact information you need. You have to initiate conversations and contacts and present your case. It's that simple. This is the what a great salesman does as opposed to an order taker. You always want the prospective customer to show interest in your product and agree to another meeting or more information but at the same time don't waste time with downers who you sense will hear you out then reject you. You have to take what sales look good and don't waste too much time on the maybes who seem like they want you to give them sex or something in order to do business with you. Have the strength to move on. There are thousands of people out there. You can't waste time on the lonely hearts who seem to like the attention you give them but don't want to buy. Take action but be intelligent about it. Have standards. It's not all about money and sales. It's also about self-respect. Do your best. Make your pitches any way you can but if people hem and haw and don't seem to want to commit to you, have the guts to terminate the relationships. If someone is not willing to commit to you, there is no reason why you should commit to him or her. Define your product in as simple terms as you can. Make your initial pitch. If your prospect implies that he can't take a meeting with you within the next 2-3 weeks which is a reasonable request then see the writing on the wall. If someone does not or cannot meet with you for 15 minutes to half an hour in the next 3 weeks, they are not strongly motivated for you or your product. Don't waste too much time on them. Be assertive about setting up meetings with new contacts. You don't want them to say they'll think about it. You want a commitment to a next meeting. You can never be too prepared. Know your products cold. Know your presentation cold. Learn public speaking, number 808 at the library. The better your command of the English language, the more educated and credible you sound. The less you use technical language and speak in plain English, the more your customer will like you. Make all your sales literature look professional. Have contracts or order forms ready for the sale. Use competitive intelligence to learn about your potential clients before you make your presentation. Is you are a salesperson, that's what you do, sales. You don't spend much time on paperwork, meetings, chewing the fat, etc. You are selling. Time is valuable. Spend it doing what you do best. It takes discipline and inspiration. Don't mess around. Commit to your craft. Set up a sales presentation, memorize it then use it loosely for every presentation you make, tailored to the individual you're with. Boldness is good, especially if you have a great product. If you have competition, Everything is fair to try to steal their business clients from them. This is capitalism, the competitive marketplace. The best man wins. Be specific about what you're selling and exactly what you want your prospective customer to do. Be both emotional, personable, and rational, factual, in your presentations but never forget, it's all about the client, not you. Do whatever you can to make him or her feel special. Remember, you're selling you. See yourself as your customer sees you. Try to be a good guy. Listen to what the customer says. Ask for feedback, for ideas from the customer on how to better serve him. Customers are scared. They have concerns. Buying for them represents spending money, a stressful proposition. Do what you can to make them feel at ease. If you've done your best and the person says no sale, put some heat on him by expressing surprise and asking why. Is it because you've done something wrong? Tell him it's a great product. Anybody would be a fool to not buy it. 
Keep the tone light even in the face of no sale. Ask for a referral. Sales SA15. Sales is all about getting new customers. In order to get new customers, you have to get out there and let them know you exist and aim to please. Take a look at any newspaper. It's screaming out hundreds of ads looking for new customers. You can afford to take out little ads that lead people to your website or a recorded message on your answering machine. You have to do it. If you don't, you won't get new customers. Prospecting is an old school concept for looking for new customers. You don't have to be arrogant and aggressive like the old schoolers who said never take no for an answer but you have to get passive means out there like a website, autoresponder, and an answering machine then get the word out that you exist and let them check you out but you have to do it. It won't get done by itself. Determine your target market, create interest in them for what you do and never stop trying to sell to them. Repetitive advertising works. If you're persistent enough, people will check you out. In any target market, 20% of your customers will give you 80% of your sales. Find good customers and bend over backwards trying to please them. You're looking for people who you think will be likely to buy your product. There are many ways to do this. You could buy mailing lists. You could look for groups and clubs that have the type of people you think would make good customers and either infiltrate these groups or get a hold of the mailing list somehow. You could create your own club and slash or offer a free email newsletter. There are public records and directories at the library, particularly if you're targeting businesses or organizations like schools or libraries as your possible customers. There are many free internet telephone, email, and fax directories, some with yellow page-like categories. Once a customer buys from you once, chances are that he will buy again. Build up your mailing list and send out offers. Send people offers or as they call them, lead processing letters by either mail, email, fax, or even by phone to existing customers and new prospects. Dripping is a term that means you advertise and send out query letters not necessarily with the intent on selling right away but when the customer needs what you sell, he will think of you first. When you present your products, present them as interesting, practical, and a good value. Follow a loose script but tailor it to the individual you're dealing with. When you write a script slash letter slash pitch, make every word count. Sell yourself. When you talk to people, you have to sound upbeat and confident. Even if you're tired and weak on the inside, you have to act like this on the outside. Find good salespeople to work for you. Successful salespeople keep going no matter what. Sales SA 16. Sales is attitude, look, pleasantness and the ability to help, inspire, or entertain someone. You have to have a persona where you come across as a nice guy or gal and a good guy or gal. You have to be informative and helpful to the customer without coming on too strong. Establish a rapport by relating to the potential customer. Try to keep a flow of conversation going. Ask open-ended questions. Anything that gets him talking is good. If you can demonstrate something for him then put it in his hands and get him to do it, all the better. Put yourself in his shoes. He doesn't want pressure. Personally, I hate it when someone tries to sell me something I didn't come into the store for. They are taking liberties with me. I can be nice to avoid a scene but when I walk out, I feel that they tried to intimidate me so I never go back. Know your products. Have a prepared speech ready explaining it with mental pictures. Small talk establishes rapport. Talk about the benefits of your products. Be a good listener. When someone objects, be empathetic. Ask for clarification. Try to explain the solution to them. Try to provide a solution. Lower the price if you must. A little profit is better than no profit. Establish rapport and trust. Don't go overboard on talk. You're selling your dignity. Make your pitch. Leave it at that. You will never make every sale so don't even try. Don't take it personally. Think of serving the customer rather than just selling to him. You will make more sales. 
Men are functional. Women are emotional. Men are direct. Women like small talk. Market to these qualities. When you make sale, mention the accessory options for the product. Thank the customer for a major sale with a card or something, stating you're available to solve any problems. Follow up major sales with catalogs, coupons, etc. in the mail. These questions will help you talk to potential customers. What are you looking for? What type most interests you? What do you currently use? What do you use the product for? What have you looked at so far? What features do you want? What color do you want? What style are you looking for? Tell me what you currently have. Why are you looking for a new widget? What would you like your widget to do that it isn't doing now? What will you be using the widget for? What do you know about the product technology? Tell me about your current setup. Sales SA 17 There is a difference between being a pest in order to make a sale and offering something that can genuinely help people. If you don't get the call back you were promised, call back on the pretense that you have new ideas and you want to go over them. Many customers feel buyer's remorse immediately after buying. If you are supplying a product with regular service, the marriage begins now. The sale was just the first step. Now you have to romance the customer and keep him satisfied. If you feel bad about a certain customer, either pass him off to another sales rep in your company or get rid of him. If your instincts tell you someone is bad, it will be probably end up being more headaches to keep him as a customer than to drop him. Don't misrepresent your products. There are many different pay arrangements such as the following. Salary. Salary and commission. Commission only. Bonuses for X amount of sales per month. Stock options in publicly traded companies. Over and above selling by retail, there are other profitable ways to sell such as the following. Sell at flea markets, craft shows, trade shows and other large events. Start a website. Sell through an auction website like ebay.com. Try to get on shopping TV networks. Try to get the big department stores and mail order catalogs to carry your product. Either become a manufacturer's sales rep or invent a product, approach manufacturers then make a deal where they will manufacture it, you will sell it and split the profits. This arrangement is called a joint venture. Invent your own product then sell it to a large company who will produce it and sell it under its own name. This is called private label marketing. Licensing a product is the same idea except that you don't sell the product outright. You are renting it out for the time period stated in the contract. After that time period runs out, the ownership goes back to you where you can license it again or produce it on your own. Start your own company selling a product or service you believe in. If you're the owner of a company, you can't do it alone. You have to hire good salespeople to get out there and sell your product for you. It takes teamwork for a company to succeed.